All right, Tim. Yeah. So, free will. Yeah, we got free will. Talked about that in the last video. There are a lot of Calvinists out there and would disagree with you. Yeah. And how this applies to salvation. Especially. Definitely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my dad was a Calvinist. Uh, right now I'm a member of a Calvinist church. Yeah, you are. Yeah, strongly Calvinist. <laughs> I'm not a Calvinist. Um, you know, I've got a friend named Leighton Flowers. Mm -hmm. You know Leighton? Yeah, we, really. Yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. And just, he's written um, a really awesome book about free will. He's, mm -hmm. he's not a Calvinist. What do you think about his view compared to what you're saying here? Well, uh, Leighton and I are going to agree on almost everything. I, I've taken it a bit further, and I, I try to explain it uh, through the lens of Molinism. And I don't think Leighton will affirm uh, Molinism the way I do. Uh, but he's not opposed to it either. I, I think he's friendly to it and open to it. Okay. So, um, but we're going to have uh, many of the same views. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, I should... What is, what is Molinism? Yeah, okay, good question. That's a funny word. It is. It's uh, derived from the last name of a Spanish theologian uh, from the 16th century named Luis de Molina. Mm. So, so Molina... Molinism. Molinism. There you go. <laughs> and he's uh, the founder of Middle Knowledge, and I can talk about that here. So, so are you going to have like Tim Stratton? Is that going to become Strattonism? Stratton. <laughs> the stratosphere? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe in 500 you're, you're years You're thinking up so. in the stratosphere, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so a lot of people think Molinism is hard to define. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. And so I say, uh, well, just like you know, uh, Dr. Craig and uh, many others will say, well, let's define mere Christianity. It, mm. at, at root, what's, what do we have to have? And that's God raised Jesus from the dead, right? If God raised right. Jesus from the dead, then some flavor of Christianity has got to be true. So you're talking about a mere Molinism. Mere Molinism. What are the two essentials that if these two things were true, then some flavor of Molinism has got to be true. And I say okay. uh, the first key is that an omniscient God, if God is omniscient and omnipotent, then something would follow. And that means that God knows everything that would happen based on any possible scenario he could create. Now, this entails middle knowledge, right? If God is all-powerful, omnipotent, and omniscient, right, all-knowing, then this would follow, that God would know uh, all that would happen based on everything he could create. Okay. Any scenario he could create. So if that's true, then God's got middle knowledge. And then the second key ingredient here of mere Molinism is that humans, like God, possess the ability to choose between a range of options, each compatible with our image of God nature, if you will. So that's how I define mere Molinism. It's really pretty simple. God's got middle knowledge and humans have libertarian free will. So if that's true, if those two statements are true, then some flavor of Molinism has got to be true. Now, what's interesting is, look at the five points of Calvinism, uh, the, the tulip. And if you look at uh, each of those five points, and then you consider the two key ingredients of Molinism, they don't contradict each other in any way if you just look at them at face value. So I contend that you can be a Calvinist, even a five-point Calvinist. I'm not a five-point Calvinist. Uh, but you can be. You can be a five-point Calvinist and still be a mere Molinist. So there doesn't have to be uh, a tension here. In fact, I look at some Calvinists uh, like uh, Oliver Crisp, uh, Alvin Plantinga, uh, Greg Kokel uh, with Stand to Reason is a good example. In his book called Tactics, he makes it clear that even though he's a five-point Calvinist, he affirms that humanity possesses uh, what I call li limited libertarian freedom. In the last video, we talked about how if you don't have uh, free will, how you can't be rational yeah. or possess knowledge gained from the process of rationality, right? And, and so Greg Kokel argues for this. Now, he's a five-point Calvinist and still says, yeah, but we've got libertarian free will in, in areas not related to salvation. Now, think about this. You know, so, so if the Calvinist, or anybody for that matter, uh, affirms that you have limited libertarian freedom, at least in some issues some of the time. And then they also affirm that God is omniscient eternally and necessarily, you know, eternally without beginning. Then God will have middle knowledge. 
So is the Calvinist in some sense being inconsistent, or is the Calvinist is the Calvinist being inconsistent with their view by adopting a form of Molinism as well, or is this they don't have to be, okay. not the mere Molinism. So the so now I apply mere Molinism to salvation issues, but you don't have to, right? So okay. that's where so I'm trying to build a bridge here between Calvinists and Molinists, uh, showing that we can all. Uh, affirm several things and we can disagree on the salvation part. Can't we all yeah. get along? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can. I try to build bridges behind the doors of the church uh, as much as I can. So That's good. Yeah. Unity is important and mm -hmm. you know, I'll never forget a statement that Michael Bird made one time and he said, you know, I'm in Australia and I'm, I'm debating people who don't think that the Bible has anything really to offer us today. Uh, while you guys are having huh. all these heated debates over non-essential theological issues, wow. he says, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the barbarians at the gates while you guys are involved <laughs> in fraternal fratricide <laughs> over the proper length of candles. Yeah, wow. So I, I like what you're doing yeah. and using it as like, okay, you know, we, we can get along with this. This doesn't have to be a, a dividing point. And yeah, I, yeah, I think the Lord would frown on all the kind of I, I remember there's a guy named Ammianus Marcellinus, and he wrote in, I believe it was the 4th century, he's the final Roman historian. Oh, really? Yeah, so he'd seen the brutalities of a lot of Rome wow. and, and what the Romans did to, to, to people who rebelled against them. And, and yet, in contrast, he saw how Christians treated one another. Hmm. And he wrote and he said, No wild beasts are such dangerous enemies to men as Christians are to one another. Wow. Amen to that. Yeah. I mean, that's horrible, but that's true. I mean, I, you and I have both seen it, right? Yeah. 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 So we need our, to do better, Christians. We need to do better. We do. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like about uh, Flowers, Leighton's, uh, Leighton Flowers' book is he, he bases his view, does some exegesis of yeah. scriptures, provides a, a fresh view, right. uh, a way of looking at those scriptures in a non-Calvinist way that that's entirely plausible. Mm -hmm. Um so I think he's right. What what your approach with mere Molinism is is not. I mean, you would agree with all the different kind of scriptures, but this isn't really a scriptural thing, is it? Oh, I think it is. The I, mere Molinism thing. Yeah, I think. You Are you interpreting scripture differently than say a strict Calvinist would? Um, Are there certain ways that you would assign a different? Well, interpretation? I'll tell you this. In my so in my first chapter of my dissertation, I go through uh, how to have a proper hermeneutic. Okay. And then I want to take that hermeneutic and apply it correctly uh, from By Genesis. By hermeneutic, you mean the, the, your approach to scriptural interpretation. Right, right, okay. exactly. And, and it's got to be logical. <laughs> That's a big part of it. I mean, you don't want an illogical interpretation of scripture because then you will have a false interpretation of scripture. I like to say that truth and logic are inextricably linked. You can't have one without the other. Mm. And so if the Bible's true, it will always be logical. And so... Even if you can't connect the logical dots, the logical dots are out there to be connected. <laughs> so you might not figure out how to do it. You can punt the mystery, but that doesn't mean that uh, somebody else might not do it. And it definitely uh, means that you should not, as a theologian or pastor, um, affirm two statements that you say are both biblical that yet contradict each other. God doesn't ask us to believe logical contradictions. Mm -hmm. right? He might want us to affirm some mysteries, but that's a different thing. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I take this logical approach um, to interpreting the entirety of Scripture. And I say that when one does that, that this Molinistic view is the best explanation or the best interpretation of Scripture. So uh, that's really the project of the final, the ultimate project of my dissertation. Awesome. Yeah. Free Thinking Ministries. Free Thinking yeah. Ministries is your ministry, right? Yep. FreethinkingMinistries.com is my website, and uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more active on YouTube now. If you want to follow, how can us they too. how can they follow you on <clears throat> YouTube? Uh, just search for Free Thinking Ministries, and that's find your YouTube it. channel. That's yep. the name of it. Yep. And on Facebook, I've got a the Free Thinking Ministries Facebook page. Mm. We've got a Free Thinking Podcast group um, that you can be a part of. Uh, I'm on Instagram under. Uh, free thinking underscore theist, the free thinking theist. <laughs> okay. and, and if they want to join that uh, group on Facebook, what's the name of it again? Uh, the free thinking podcast and the free thinking 
free thinking yeah free thinking podcast group and the free thinking ministries page so there are two yeah pages yeah. on facebook groups that you have yep okay you can follow us on twitter too at free, uh let's see at free think men awesome yeah, yeah. love you man love you appreciate too, the work, work you're doing thank you well that's pretty cool hope you all enjoyed it <laughs>